Well, we're continuing to have a look at the findings from the road safety audit that was done on the shared path in Eric Street. Today, we're looking at finding number one, where the shared path ties in at Marine Parade. And the auditor said that there's no signage to say that the shared path stops on the surface of the shared path. And I think what they were meant here was there should be something like this giveaway sign stenciled onto the path as a pavement marking to let you know that it's finishing and you've got to give way to traffic coming from your right. Now, the Superhaco Post jumped on this report and said that it slams the danger cycle path. Well, does it really? Because it doesn't actually mention this finding. And interestingly enough, Main Roads came out and said they disagree that a line marking is actually required here. And they referenced section 822 of something or other, which I went and searched for and couldn't find. But let's just roll down the path uh, going west a couple of times and have a look at uh, how it functions. So yes, there is in fact nothing at the end of that green paint to say that the path finishes. It's just the green paint finishes, which I guess kind of makes it obvious that the path is finishing. And from right up the top of the hill, you can see down here that there's a T-junction, that you know there's a road and you kind of need to give way to the vehicles and actually any people on the path, uh, you know, going to get a coffee and stuff like that. Interestingly enough, though, although they're saying something is needed here, I've been driving down to this car park for nearly 40 years to go swimming at Cottesloe, and I've parked in, well, the old car park here and all around the streets, and there's never been a giveaway sign or a stop sign here to say to drivers as they're exiting this little section of car park that they need to give way, that the car park finishes, that Marine Parade starts. So why is it that we've quite happily let people drive out of this car park for 40, 50, 60 years, I don't know how long, without needing to tell them that the car park finishes. But now we suddenly have to tell cyclists that the bike lane is finishing here. I don't get what value that's really adding. Um, I mean, if, if you can think of why that would add some value, feel free to leave a comment. But I'm a little bit mystified as to you know why that's suddenly required. And as I said, Main Roads looked up the standards and said, yeah, we disagree. Um, we don't think any signage is required. And you know, they're Main Roads. They're the uh, the people that write the guidelines. So uh, that they might be wrong. I mean, you might have a good reason for why you think they're wrong. But, you know, if you think so, if you've got a good reason. <laughs> say so. But I think the lesson here though is this is a good road safety audit whether you agree with the findings or not. It's well written, covers a lot of issues, explains them quite well and council and main roads have had a chance to say whether they agree with the findings or not. And the good old local media has grabbed the report and decided to weaponize it and use it in their campaign against active transport infrastructure like this. I don't know why they dislike active transport. I don't know why they dislike bikes and bike lanes and all that kind of stuff. Clearly they do. And they've run a campaign for well over a year fighting against the construction of this bike lane. And then ever since it's been put in, they've continued to snipe at it ever since. So it just goes to show that even a really useful tool like a road safety audit can be weaponized if it's put in the wrong hands.